Hey YouTubers, welcome back to Desert Have a Garden. Today I want to share with you my top secret recipe for challah. So, as long as I give you this recipe, you have to promise not to tell it to any of my farmer's market customers because this is one of my best selling breads. Uh, but really, in all fun, I think it will be just fine. Um, once you try this bread, you're going to fall in love with it. It is slightly sweet, it's a rich egg bread, it has a cool shape to it, and it's just one of those breads that is really fantastic. So I will be showing you how to let the bread machine do the majority of the work. So it will be doing all of the kneading for us. We will be doing the shaping because it's hollow. You can't just bake it in the bread machine and it'll be kind of plain shaped like a sandwich loaf. And that just doesn't work for hollow. So we want to make sure that we will be doing the shaping. A few pieces of equipment you'll need in order to get started will be a bowl for rising in. It doesn't matter um, the material of the bowl. You can use ceramic, plastic, stainless. It really just doesn't matter. I will be using my Cousin Art bread machine. You will also need an additional little bowl and fork for making an egg wash later. You'll need measuring cups and measuring spoons. Also a pan to bake on and I like to use parchment paper. And I think that is all the extra equipment that you'll be needing. Oh, plastic wrap as well. You definitely want to have some plastic wrap. So once you have those things on hand, I will get started with the ingredients. Now, first things first, I have the pan for the bread machine here and you want to make sure that you get the paddle in there. Make sure that it's in there firmly and ready to do its work. If you forget that part and you put the ingredients in, it's a mess to deal with getting everything back out of there. So that's the first thing to do. Next, we want to add our dry ingredients. I have four cups of flour here, and um, this can be all-purpose flour. It doesn't have to be bread flour for this recipe. It really is quite easy. If you use bread flour, that's okay too, but you will probably need to add a little bit more water in order to, uh, because the bread flour absorbs more moisture. Next is sugar, one-third cup of sugar. That may seem like a lot, and it is. Next, we will have one and a half teaspoons of salt. I like to use sea salt, but any old salt will do. So one and a half teaspoons there. Next comes our yeast, and you'll want to use an instant yeast. I buy it in the one pound sizes because I go through quite a bit and um, I keep it in the freezer. So one tablespoon. This is a fast recipe, so it will rise relatively quickly because we're putting all this yeast in there. Next come our wet ingredients. We will want two tablespoons of oil. You can use vegetable oil or any mild flavored oil. I like to use coconut oil. And this is expeller pressed coconut oil, so it doesn't have um, that coconut flavor to it, but whatever your preference is works. So two tablespoons of coconut oil. Next come our eggs, and I have two eggs that I will put in there. I like to leave them out a bit before I start cooking with them so that they've come to room temperature, just so they don't cool down our bread. Um, it likes to be nice and warm while it is mixing. We have those two eggs there. And last we have water. So one cup of warm water. And so you don't want it like hot because if it's hot, it will kill the yeast and the warmth of it helps the bread start to begin and activate um, with the yeast there. I will put it into the machine and we'll get mixing. So I place the pan into the machine and lock it into place there and for this we will be using setting number eight on my machine is for dough so you just press the menu until you get to number eight and then you simply press start this will allow the machine to do all of the work of the mixing and kneading and we will check back in a few
The machine has now completed the dough cycle and you can see it has formed the dough into a nice round ball here. Next we will remove it and put it into our bowl for rising. So I lift it out of the machine and I'll get this machine out of the way here. And then our bowl does need a little bit of preparation. So here's our bowl. I lightly grease the bowl so it doesn't stick, so the dough doesn't stick. So I use a little bit more of the coconut oil there. And just using my hand, I kind of swirl it around and get the sides. Um, because the dough is fragile, you don't want it to stick to the edges of the bowl and then it tears the gluten and gives you a less beautiful loaf. So we're nice and greased up there. Simply lift the dough out of here. And then I have my ball of dough. I kind of just form it into a round ball again and place it in here. I like to give it a little mist from just a water bottle with pure water in it. And that just helps keep it from um, forming a crust or drying out at all. And also our plastic wrap goes over the top to make sure we seal in the moisture for the dough. Okay, and now I will allow that to rise. Because my kitchen is pretty warm today, it's about 76 degrees, it should be just fine on the counter. Um, if your kitchen is cool, what you can do is put this in the oven with just the light on. Um, you turn the oven light on and it will warm it up in there just a little bit, just enough to, to help the bread rise, but you definitely don't want it to start cooking. And we will allow this to rise for about a half hour to 45 minutes until it has fully doubled in size. Now that I have allowed the dough to rise for 30 minutes and it has doubled in size, we have a few pieces of equipment that are needed for this next phase of shaping the dough. So first off, I have my digital scale and that's not necessary, especially if you're just baking for yourself, for your family and friends. However, the perfectionist in me really likes to weigh out dough so that the loaves are equal to each other in weight as well as the different pieces are equal. You'll also need a bread scraper or a knife can be used in place if you don't have this. Oftentimes people will have something like this around for making cakes. Uh, this is to lift the dough as well as to divide it. You will need egg wash. Um, I accidentally made this off screen, so just simply crack an egg into a bowl and whisk it up. And I like to use a pastry brush, or it can also be called a basting brush, and I'll use that to apply the egg wash. I like to have a little pot of flour in order to keep the dough from sticking to the counter if it's too moist. Then you will also need sesame seeds at, or poppy seeds, whichever you choose to top the dough with. So um, traditionally, Hala has one of these two toppings on it. So let's get the things out of the way that we don't need. Um, oh, also you'll need your pan with parchment paper nearby so that you can place your shaped loaves on it. You can see our dough here has become very nice and puffy. There's even moisture on the inside of the plastic wrap indicating that the moisture was kept inside. So first, to get the scale zeroed, I like to use just a backup empty bowl and I use it on an ounce of setting to get it zeroed out. And then I can weigh this bowl with the dough and I'm getting 39.1 ounces. And so to make two loaves, that tells me that each one needs to be roughly 20 ounces. So I zero my scale again, and I will dump this dough out onto the counter. And so since we greased the bowl, it should very easily slip out, as you see it did there. And I'm going to roughly divide it in half and we'll see how close I get to that 20 ounces. And I put it up here, and that is spot on 20 ounces. Not sure if you can see that in the film, probably not. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside and cover it in plastic wrap, and I'll work with the other piece of dough first. So, Hala comes 
in two traditional shapes typically. And the first one is a braid and the second one is a swirl. So I will start with a simple three rope braid. So this needs to be zeroed again. There we go. Okay, so if it's 20 ounces, a third of that is roughly like six and a half ounces, somewhere in there. So I will split it into three pieces and try and get it close to just over six ounces each. Okay, that's 6.4, that'll work. And let's get a couple more pieces. That's 6.1, let's see where this one is at. 6.2, perfect. Okay, so now we have our three pieces of dough for our rope. I'll get the scale out of the way so I can use this area here. All right, so to shape the first piece of rope, I kind of flatten it out into a loose rectangle shape. And then by stretching it and folding it into itself and pressing it down, I start making it into a rope shape. Okay. and it's all tucked back in on itself and then I use my hands to stretch it out and I see it sticking just a little bit I'm gonna use a tiny bit of flour here you don't want to use too much because then it just kind of rolls in place so I stretch it out into a nice long rope really about um, I don't know what is this 16 to 18 inches somewhere in there so I have the first rope piece. Then I move on to the second piece. Flatten it out and stretch and roll, pressing it back onto itself. There's our little roll. Get that out of the way. And stretch it out. I go a little bit longer than the other one because you see it shrinks back just a bit. And there we go, those are approximately the same length. And then number three. By stretching it and folding it back onto itself, it's building more tension and helping that gluten develop nicely for a nice finished loaf. And there is number three. Okay, now that we have three ropes, we simply begin folding it like a normal braid. So an outside piece goes over the middle and then the other outside over the middle. And you keep repeating this and you see I'm kind of tucking it up to make it a nice tight braid. And the outside goes over the middle. Continuing down to the end. And when we get down here to the end, you pinch them all together so it doesn't unravel. Can you see that there? And then on this end, we do kind of a reverse braid for these last couple little ends here. And same thing, we just pinch it all together at the end. I'm going to move this onto my pan out of the way and we'll work with the other piece. Okay, the second shape is an infinity swirl. And for this shape, we simply need a big long rope. Okay, so we do the same thing we did to make the shorter ropes, but this one will just be much bigger. So you flatten down into a rectangle, and I wanna make sure I'm not sticking here. I've got a little bit of stick going on. There we go. Okay, so folding it into itself, and pressing it down. And we have a big roll. Okay, now we roll it out into a very long rope. And this one, I would say, is probably longer than two feet when we've gotten it its full length. And I'll start over here on the screen where you can see. So you start making a swirl by tucking it into itself and then you just start swirling around like a snail shell. And we just keep swirling around and around. And then when we get to the end, you press the tail under and pinch it. Because again, you don't want it to unravel. 
And so those are our two classic Hala shapes. They both have religious significance in the Jewish faith. Uh, you can read up more on that if you're interested, or you may already know. So I'll place this on my pan and we'll move on to the next step. Now that you see both of these shapes on the sheet, so we have our classic braid and we have the infinity swirl, next I will give them a generous egg wash. So we have our egg wash here prepared and I brush it on. And what the egg wash does is it gives the final baked bread a shiny appearance and it also helps it turn nice and golden brown. So it gives it a beautiful color when it's finished. And so you use this pastry brush gently um, so as not to deflate the bread or to puncture it. So I believe I have that whole swirl covered there. Next is our braid. And I work somewhat quickly here because I don't want it to dry out before I get it covered with plastic wrap. We live in Arizona. I mean, what can I say? It is just dry as dry can be here. Even though today is a little bit of a rainy day, it doesn't matter. It still is dry in the house and things dry out very quickly. So let's get that all egg washed up. Now the extra egg wash, you can keep this and put it in the refrigerator, cover it up with plastic wrap, and then you can use it for making French toast or something. Um, Hala makes wonderful French toast. It is so tasty. So don't throw out your egg wash. You can definitely use that. Add a couple eggs and some milk and make a nice French toast. Next, I have my poppy seeds. And I'll put poppy seeds on the infinity swirl over here. So I just shake some into my hand and start sprinkling. You can put as many or as few as you like. I think they look kind of fun and festive, so I like to put a bunch of them on there. Okay, and then on our braid, I will put some sesame seeds. Again, just sprinkling them on there as generously as you would like. I'm pretty generous. Okay, looking good. Now we cover them up to allow them a second rise. And the second rise, again, um, is not very long. So I find that usually about um, a half hour is plenty of time for our second rise. Getting a second piece of plastic wrap going here. There we go. Okay, and let those rise somewhere warm. Now we're going to preheat the oven, so you probably don't want to put these in the oven while you're preheating, but let's get that oven warming up. While the dough is rising for the second time and we are preparing it to go into the oven, you want to get the oven preheating. So I turn it on to 350 degrees. I like to use the convection setting that has air that circulates in the oven, I find that I get better, more even cooking results. It's up to you. If you just, if you don't have a convection oven, that's okay. Just simply set it to uh, 350 degrees to preheat. So on my oven, it just says quick bake, and then I select the temperature. Another thing about challah is it is a delicate bread. It has the sugar and the eggs in it, and both of those things cause it to tend to burn, especially on the bottom. So we want to place the challah in the center of the oven when we go to bake it, but I have another trick to keep it from burning. So aside from using a pan that's lined with parchment paper, I also use a pizza stone. So I have a big pizza stone um, that's just regular, um, I don't know what it's called, stoneware. And you can get these from Pampered Chef. I'm pretty sure this one is not Pampered Chef. And I rarely use it for pizza. You can actually see how dark it is because I use it all the time for baking on. I just use it to get nice and hot in the oven and to have a barrier from the base of the bread from the direct heat. So I put this onto my middle rack in the oven and allow the stone to preheat with the oven as well. 
and we will allow that oven to preheat. I don't put the bread in as soon as it beeps that it's preheated. I always give it at least five to 10 more minutes of preheating time to make sure that we are completely at the right temperature. So let's let that bread rise and the oven heat up. Okay, the bread has been rising for about a half hour. About 10 minutes ago, the oven beeped saying that it was up to temperature. We can see that the two loaves are nice and puffy here. Oh, there we go, we can only do one at a time there. All right, so carefully you take the plastic wrap off because you don't wanna pull on the dough. And it usually doesn't stick much because of the egg wash and the seeds act as an insulator there. And now I will put it into the oven on our hot pizza um, stone. And I, for me, I know it takes about 25 minutes to bake these in my oven at 350 degrees. You may want to start checking at about 20 minutes um, just to make sure you don't get too dark. So let's go ahead and get these in the oven and get baking. All right, the bread has been baking for 25 minutes and it is finished, so let's pull it out of the oven and take a peek at what it is supposed to look like. Okay, so here you can see the infinity swirl. Isn't that pretty? How it kind of goes up like that? Almost like a snail shell. And then there you see the braid and you see how pretty that is so you can see how they have a nice deep golden crust and that comes from the egg wash and making sure that it's baked long enough and um, it's slightly uh, crisp on the outside but it will be moist and delicious on the inside so i put these on a rack to cool until they're cool enough to handle and then I take the bread off the pan and put it directly on the cooling rack to prevent the bottom from getting um, soggy. You don't want it to get soggy. So let's allow these to cool a bit and then we'll come back for a taste test. All right, I have my official taste tester here and he is going to give this challah bread a taste to see how good it is. Um, actually, both of these loaves that I just made are going to be gifts this afternoon. So I made another batch uh, just yesterday that the kids have been nibbling on. So we're going to use that one. Kind of a bit of a spoiler alert there. All right, but I'll give you an up close here. So you can see it has nice air distribution in there. Good golden color. And here we go. Taste tester. You like it? All right, I already know he likes it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more updates in the future. Mom, that's funny because our, I did a thumbs up and you did a thumbs up. We are funny, aren't we?